What's going on, Darren? How are you? I'm good, man. How are yourself? Good. Welcome back to MMA Junkie Radio. Great to have you, man. Yeah, no problem. I like being here. Hey, so let me ask you a really corny question to start things off. Yeah. Have you ever done the Chewy? Did the, no, I haven't done a Chewy, but I would I, I would think about doing a Chewy, but I wouldn't want the spit and the hot sauce and all that other stuff in there. You know what I mean? Like, like I'm not that guy. Like, I, I would maybe do a Chewy, and it has to be, like, a decently clean shoe, but I'm not going to have a bunch of people spit in there and put hot sauce and all. I'm not that disgusting, but, I mean, hey. I hear you. So goes to the shoey on Saturday, and I'm kind of jealous that he's done one and I haven't done one. I swore I would never do one, but he did one that was so seamless that uh, I don't know I, how can I let my little brother uh, one up me? You know, now that's not to say I, I'm I'm gonna do one anytime soon, but it just occurred to me, and I was wondering because I've seen these videos of shoeys going around. So so you're you're in, but you got. Certain rules is what you're saying. That's certain rules. I don't. Uh, I just don't grab a, a shoe from a random person and drink it. Let's put it that way. I'd have to see it, pour it in there myself, and drink it. You know. Is there, uh, cool. Just your own shoe. I think I, I, if I could play it off and say, "Hey, look, look what I," you know, somebody just handed it to me, but really, it's my buddy handing me my own shoe. I think yeah. I could play that off. Like I'd be okay with that. Like drinking out of my own shoe because at least it's my. <laughs> But some random person's feet I'm drinking out of is uh it's a little different, you know. If, if you had to avoid a teammate from your gym, a shoey from what pick one shoe that you just would absolutely not in your gym, who who would that fighter be? Uh let's put let's say let's say trainer, my boxing coach uh, Joey. He has nasty feet. He always talks about he never takes off his socks or anything. So no, no shoey from Joey. <laughs> I love it. All right. So listen, man, like, this is not your first rodeo. What gets you motivated to get up and train hard and get prepared knowing that the other guy wants to hurt you as bad as you want to hurt them? Now you've been able to stack some paper, you know, and, and create a career for yourself, provide a home for your family. Um, you fought some of the best in the world. You've had your win streaks, you know, like, you've been through a lot. So now, nowadays, what is it that – Still motivates you to grind. Well, I just I just love to compete, man. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm doing what I like to do, what I love to do. Um, you know, I have other things I could be doing. I'm a union pipe fitter, so I have another, I have other things, other careers I can go into. But I just I I like the you know the lifestyle of fighting. I like the training part of it, and uh, you know, just uh, I I have to, I like to see how uh, how I compete with these guys still you know I wake up every day and uh, I know these guys are improving so I have to improve too I have to change some of my uh, training tactics and uh, keep trying to get better and that kind of motivates me too is because you watch the game man from 11 years ago when I first got into it, it's totally different you know these these guys are better athletes there's way more science behind it so I mean I'm just trying to get involved as much as I can with the science mm -hmm. and. What is your, like your, to me, your finest moment that I can remember is the Bectic fight. Yeah. Um, and I, and I, so I want to, I want to, I want to compare to what I, uh, what I want to say to, to gambling. So I had, when I lived in Southern California, I would come with my buddies to Vegas a lot. And there was one trip where I won 10,000 bucks. Nice. Um, it ruined me because Future trips, if I was only up 5,000, my buddies would go like, hey, you're winning. Let's go. No, nah, man. I wanted to either get to 10 or 12 and push it, right? Yeah. So I feel like a loser almost when I was at five, and then I would I would lose three grand, and I'm still up two. I should go home happy with two grand, and I'd be actually mad that I didn't listen at five. And knowing that at that point, I was really mad that I hadn't gotten to 10. So that's my question to you is, um, do you chase moments like that feeling you had after the Bectic win, and can you still get those from just you know other types of wins? Like, and, and what is it? What what's that moment that you chase nowadays? I mean, I'm just trying to keep winning, man. I mean, I'm at the I had you know the four fight lose, losing streak, and uh, you know I came off. I finally won one. Um, yeah, I definitely chase those moments, but I, I don't want to force those moments. Those moments just happen from you know countless hours of training. So if it happens, it happens. But I just, you know, go in there and try to do what I do, what I've trained to do, and that's to win. And if it happens, hell yeah, dude. It's, it's, you know, it's going to be an awesome experience. You know, I've had a few of those really good fights like that. But 
Now, sometimes you don't have the, the exact fight that you want. You got to expect that. Darren, on that same note, is it difficult as a pro fighter balancing, um, you know, the love for the sport, the love for what you're doing versus the pressures of having to win and, and staying in the UFC, all that stuff? Is it, have you found kind of like a medium for that? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's it's a lot of pressure. I mean, that's every fight we put a lot on line. You know, we got, it's half our money if we don't win. Um, you know, you, you, you gotta, it's like you know, they tell you only as good as your last fight. So I mean, you got to put, you got to be there, you got to perform. And uh, there's a lot of pressure on it. And um, for me, what I've been doing kind of lately is I just, you know, I watch some of these fights, but I'm, I used to watch every, you know, UFC. There's so many of them now. I just watch, you know, some of my teammates fight. I try to step away from it when I'm not training and do other things with my family and keep my mind off of other stuff, not only fighting like I used to be. And that uh, that helps me with, uh, the, you know, the stress and stuff like that. Because watching fighters these days, man, I mean, that stresses me out. You know, you, you feel the moment. You think about the moment. You see the guy losing. You're like, oh, man, I hate feeling like that. Or, you know what I mean? You see a guy, you know, he's down. And you're like, man, I've been there. You know what it feels like. So it stresses me out a little bit, even though I don't even know some of these guys. You know, after everything you've been through in your career, looking at this matchup in particular, like, Overall, when you get an opponent, um, is there much studying that has to go into it? Like, it seems like you've kind of seen it all. You've, you've seen every type of style come at you. How much of it is preparing for your opponent versus making sure you're ready as well? Um, I feel like there's always, you got to watch the film, and there's always a few things that no matter what, they're going to do over and over and over in a fight. So I want to get those down. They're going to throw new things at you. They're going to add little things in the, in the game plan. But there's always a few combos, maybe a few submissions like this guy has, a guillotine and stuff like that, that uh, you got to really know and you got to work on the defenses on, make sure it's on point. But other than that, it's just, you know, do what I do. I know you're focused on your opponent, but you've been doing it for so long, and I feel like you get to a position where Darren Elkins should have some kind of credit where he could say, I've always wanted to fight blank. You guys make that happen in my next fight. Is there like a name or somebody that you that's maybe eluded you throughout the years? Uh, man, I can't really say, say. I mean, I fought most of the guys I wanted to fight. You know, they, they don't a lot of guys. I fought a lot of guys in the rosters. There's a lot of new guys, though. That's uh, that's exciting about all these new, you know, the new guys in the top 10 and stuff, top 15. And I'm just trying to work my way back there, man. You know, I got a while to get there, but I'd like to just get back in the fifth, top 15 and whatever opponents that one by one that can get me there, that's what I want to do. You know, if I'm not mistaken, this will be your third fight still without fans because even though you fought in Florida, I think it was the first batch of fights that had no fans when the pandemic hit us and, and the UFC made its return. Um, is that kind of sucking and getting old? Like, you know, cause like last week Vegas was popping with, with the pay-per-view, but how do you feel about that? Man, I wish there was fans. I mean, I feed off the crowd. I like having the crowd, the energy, um, it makes the week that much more fun. Um, when it's like this, it's okay. It's like a sparring session, it feels like. You can hear every punch. You can hear every elbow. You can hear your coach. You can hear their coach. So, you know, there's benefits of it. You can hear everything your coach says, but you can hear everything their coach says, too. So you can kind of plan off of that, too. So, um, but, yeah, I miss the fans. And watching the fights last week, I was like, man, that'd be really nice to have a, a, a big stadium of fans again. Who is the head coach now? Like, who actually runs the show at Team Alpha Man? Is it Castillo? No, there is no head coach. They do, you know, we talk about they split up the time. So there's a lot of, like, you know, Danny does a lot. But he does only privates now with his certain fighters that, that want to work with him. And then we have Chris Holdsworth, who I work with. You know, I've always had Danny and Chris in my corner. And now I'm working with Joey the last. This is my third fight, Joey Rodriguez. This is my third fight with him. And uh, but you know, Faber does a lot of practices. Mike Mike Malott, um, Chris Holdsworth, and uh, Ryan Faber does a lot of practices. So it's not really a single head coach or all kind of head coaches they consider it. Okay, yeah, I, I remember hearing something like that. It just had been a while since I asked the question, so I wasn't I didn't know if they had, they had created a hierarchy. So what that means is, if you say, guys, I'm fighting on the 24th. You're with, with whatever coach is available out of those. I mean, if all of them can make it great, but 
let's just say this one or that one can. You guys have built up this comfort level that I'm good to go with Holdworth. I'm good to go with Rodriguez. Let's go. We're running it. No big deal. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I think we all have our core people that you work with, you kind of see eye to eye with, and you just, you know, I worked, with, like I said, with those guys for a while now, so it's like, you know, you tell them you got to fight and they're ready to go, but uh, you've worked with all the coaches, you've seen, you know, you've seen all their moves, they tell you all their moves, so they know what you're doing too, so it's a, it's a good blend of everything with all the coaches like that. Last question, last year, the Northern California area got hit hard with the fires. This happens every year. The last year was terrible. And I remember it actually became a smoke problem, a breathing problem, you know, for a lot of our friends and colleagues and, and the fighters we cover. This year, it seems like extreme heat is something that's hitting you guys hard. Is it, has either one of those, have, I know the fires have started up again, but has it made it difficult at all for or impacted you guys at all, your breathing or, or just your quality of life, I guess? I don't know. I mean, I haven't really noticed much of a difference. It's been really hot. I mean, you got to run at a certain time of days and do workouts. It's easier at certain times of the day. You know, early mornings, you don't want to wait until about 2 o'clock because then it gets really hot here. It's cool in the afternoon, cool in the morning. So you can work around it. It gets cool in the afternoons in the morning, but – I mean, and in the mornings and uh, the the evenings, but you don't want to do it in mid afternoon. It's way too hot here. As far as smoke and stuff, I've seen a little bit of smoke, but not anything. So, I'm sure there's gonna be more fires. It's really dry right now. We're in this big drought, and everything's yellow here. So, you know, we're gonna probably have another bad fire this year. Well, let's hope the things turn around. Um, but in the meantime. Good luck with the rest of your camp. Safe travels to Vegas. We'll see you in a couple of weeks here in uh, here in Sin City. And thank you as always for your time, man. Uh, it's been great covering your career. Not to make it sound like it's winding up or anything, but uh, I'm just telling you that we've done this many times. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, always a pleasure too. Appreciate you guys.